All Things Conceivable, a surrogacy podcast with Nazca Fontes. Hello, listeners, and welcome to All Things Conceivable, a surrogacy podcast. Well, we are nearing the end of 2021, and wow, what a year it's been. Uh, lots of lessons learned, and during an especially challenging period of time, what we've also learned is in spite of what we faced in 2021, it has truly been a gift, and more intended parents and surrogates than ever before are turning to surrogacy partnerships to help build families. And with our guest today, I think that there's no better intended parent to help showcase just what it's like to persevere and partner with an incredible surrogate. Our guest today, she's a realtor, she's the host of Smart is the New Sexy, and she is a soon-to-be mom through surrogacy. Uh, Listeners, please welcome Arsiak Bertinian. So Arsiak, I hear that you just got back from an important appointment this morning. I did, I did. So my surrogate, um, we... Um, we've been going through a lot of appointments, but a couple of weeks ago, they discovered that she had a dilated umbilical cord. And with that being said, for me, with my last surrogacy journey, it the umbilical cord is something that's vital to pregnancy, right? But when I hear that, I get very nervous. I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't want to hear umbilical cord because that's how we lost our last pregnancy further, you know, in the third trimester. So I pushed for more ultrasounds and my surrogate has been so amazing. And they did discover that. And with that discovery, they they had recommended that she comes in every week for an ultrasound until delivery. So just last Friday, we found out we're actually going to be parents much sooner than we thought we were going to be three weeks sooner, but we are so excited and ah. so happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a great update this morning. Yeah. So today we just did, uh, we had our ultrasound just to make sure everything's going good and that umbilical cord has not um, gotten any bigger and it's either gotten smaller, or just stayed the same and stabilized. So we've got good news today. It's been, so she's got her OB appointment at the end of this week, another ultrasound, another OB, and then another ultrasound, and uh, OB, and then baby will be here the following week. So three weeks from today. Isn't that fantastic? Well, for those who are listening in, this is being recorded around the holiday season, and what a gift to, to, uh, you know, receive during this time of year. I'm just so thrilled for you. Well, there's, you you know, you have so much to share about, you know, being a a, a patient through this process about going through surrogacy. There's, there's a lot that we'll get into, but before we, we pivot to that, can you just tell us a little bit more about you? I'd love to learn about you more. Sure. Thank you. Um, So I'm a Chicago native. I've been here 20 some odd years. Um, I was born here, moved to Arkansas, was raised in Arkansas, came back to go to school. And I had I had a long journey. Um, I was married at a very young age, got divorced, and I never thought that I wanted to have kids um, in my 20s or even 30s. I was more focused on my career until I met the man. of my dreams, he would love this one, of my dreams, who I am married to now. And when I met him, I was in my 30s and I wasn't even thinking about kids then either. I was just focused on my career. I wanted my career to take off and I wanted to go into media and just share stories because I've always had a fascination with talking to people and learning about people and wanting to know their stories and their journeys and where did they come from and how did they grow up and why are they doing what they did and what did they eat for breakfast and so on and so (laughs) forth. And um, my background was real estate. So I always loved helping people. But throughout that process, I enjoyed meeting the people that I got to work with. And so after going through my divorce, I jumped into media, met my husband, that my husband now didn't want to have kids until later on. And I was in my mid 30s when I decided that Amir and myself, Amir, my husband, um, we're like, you know what, we're together. Um, we've been through it all. We're both, you know, respectfully in our careers. We don't have to be married to start having kids. And that's where our journey started. And boy, did I get a 
rude awakening. Um, I didn't realize that it would be so difficult because I never really was educated on um, IVF and what that meant. And women over 35, you know, being, having trouble conceiving. My problem was I could get pregnant. I just couldn't stay pregnant. So I always thought, you know what, it's just the timing's not right. You know, mm -hmm. maybe this mm -hmm. isn't supposed to happen mm -hmm. or maybe it happened for a reason. I don't know. I gave myself all these excuses before I actually went to see my, uh, before I went to go see an IVF doctor, because that's when my husband and I really started getting serious about, you know, starting kid, starting a family. And when I went into my first visit with my IVF doctor and my OBGYN, my OBGYN actually recommended that I go to the IVF doctor. She's like, you know what, Arsiak, you are, you know, 36 years old, you've had multiple miscarriages, um, you need assistance. And she started to talk to me about IVF. And then I went and met with my uh, IVF doctor. And that's where I started to get educated on and started going through that process, not understanding what it all meant. I thought like, oh, great. I'm with my doctor, my IVF doctor. I'm going to do all these shots. I'm going to get good embryos and then we'll get pregnant. Well, that's not the case. That wasn't the case for me. And um, my journey was five rounds of IVF, finally, um, four, you know, healthy embryos, which, you know, women out there that are, you know, that have gone through IVF, they know how important that or how vital that embryo is, um, mm -hmm. because that's what's going to hopefully create that pregnancy and transform into, you know, and transform into the pregnancy that you want. Um, for me, it didn't happen that way. My journey didn't look like that. I just, I couldn't carry. So um, that's when we started talking about surrogacy. And don't get me wrong, when I, you know, all along as a woman that wants children and to start a family, we grow up thinking that, oh, we just, you know, we're, that's a woman carries the baby and I'll always have my own baby, not thinking another woman could actually help you with that process. And um, we started, I started hearing about surrogacy through celebrities, obviously. And then I started hearing about it slowly through my group of friends. And there was this one particular friend of mine that she's a little bit older than me that actually did that. And she was the first one to go through it. And she was the one that I went to and talked to her about it. And when I taught, when I spoke to her about surrogacy and, and started understanding it and saw her beautiful daughter, that's when I was like, okay, this is what, what my journey is going to look like. Mm -hmm. You know, just listening to you speak, right? There's so much power in your voice and it's clear that your journey has been about empowerment, right? And, and, yeah. but no doubt I can imagine that it didn't always feel that way. I can only, mm -hmm. you know, imagine the setbacks, the disappointments, the trials, the tribulations before you and your husband finally landed on you know, surrogacy is a really important option. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a successful option for us. Let's go for it. So tell us about that moment where you and your husband finally decided this is our pathway. This is where we're going to go next. Yeah. You know, before I get into that real quick, my background, you know, I started um, an online platform talk show called Smart as the New Sexy. And my thing was to, you know, my whole journey has been empowering and inspiring and educating women. And for a period of time, while I was doing this whole thing with IVF and surrogacy, I was afraid to share that. I started sharing a little bit because I felt like a failure, you mm. know, like I couldn't achieve sure. that one thing. But then I'm out here, you know, wanting to empower women, but I didn't know how to talk about it, right? I didn't know how to speak about it because I felt, and I felt powerless. I felt like this is not working for me. How am I gonna talk to other women about something that's not working for me? I'm talking to other women that are things that are working for me. And it was really hard for me to get to that decision. After talking to my friend and talking to my husband that had that was so supportive through this whole entire journey. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm Middle Eastern. Like nobody had put, and now let's throw in the cultural thing too. 
on top of the society thing, the right, cultural right. thing, right? Yes. Because our culture, nobody got, nobody, I mean, nobody in my family had problems reproducing, you know, having babies and, you know, production, reproduction, if that's the right word to say. But um, it was, it was a lot of things that was going through my mind and I started to beat myself up until I so started- So kind of all the old common themes, right? The shame, yes. the guilt, the yep. secrecy, right? Yes. Am I right? Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. And all these things that we go through as women, because now we feel like failures. First of all, IVF, right? You feel like a failure because you think it's all you, but we have to back up. It takes two to make a baby. It doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't happen. That's right, right. You know, it's not just one person, you know, the woman, the human body of a woman, what we could do is so amazing. I just, it's mind blowing how we could just give birth to another human being. And I started to those were all the feelings. I'm like, I'm a woman. I'm supposed to give birth to another human being. I'm supposed to be that woman. And finally, when my husband and I, we sat down, we talked to our doctor. I talked to my OBGYN. I talked to a friend of mine that went through this. And I said, look, if we want, my husband and I, if we want to give this all that we have and to be able to have a child that's our own without you know any help, but having you know, that surrogate carry our own DNA in our embryo to actually see that. And, you know, this is our option. And he's like, let's go for it. Whatever it is that you decide, let's go for it. Mm -hmm. So how did you feel after you both finally made that, that, that decision? You know, you made the resolution. This was what you were going to do. How did that feel for the two of you? Empowered. Empowered <sighs> because it was, it's just such a beautiful thing thing when you start to educate yourself about it like I did I felt empowered I was like oh my gosh this is finally going to happen for us we are finally going to be able to start a family so we went through this first agency that we started with we didn't start with um we didn't start with conceivabilities even though I had spoken to them and I till this I had to stop beating myself up that I didn't go with them in the first place. That's like for another day. But I will say this, it's so important, the the agency that you use, do your research. Um, but this agency, the first agency that we used was a, you know, was in the top five list of recommendations from our doctor. So after doing all our research, talking to them, we started with this, with the last agency, um, and after like seven months, they, uh, they matched us with our surrogate, the one that we started with the first time. And I didn't know, I was just excited. I met her, she seemed very nice. Her husband seemed very nice. We went through the whole process and I was just excited because all I wanted was just for us to be pregnant. Well, sure, you finally made the decision, right? You were on a yeah. mission. This was and your track. Been, yeah, it's been like, it was like a year, you know, and this takes time, you know, it definitely takes a lot of time. It's not something that happens overnight. It's not like you could go to Target and pick up paper towels and come home and, you know, right. it's done. It's not like that. This is a long process that takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of research. You have to educate yourself, ask questions, make sure you surround yourself with the right people, the right counsel. So... Once we got to that decision, our surrogates, you know, we decided we went through the process, the whole contract, all of that. And then she started her meds. First trans, first time she transfers, she's pregnant. And we were like, oh my God, I cannot believe this is happening. So we shared the news. I remember with our entire family on, um, on Christmas Eve. Um, and we were just so excited. We were like eight weeks pregnant, but we were just so excited. We just wanted to share it with our family and we couldn't wait. And um, all along, you know, everything was going great. And then COVID hits. We are and, in- And how long is, how, how far along is your surrogate at this point when COVID hits? When COVID hits, she, so let's say January, 2020, we started hearing this. She was, I wanna say like three months about three okay. months. Yeah. 
So we were just like, yeah. Yeah, she was like 12 weeks at this point. So we're like, okay, that's fine. You know, we'll just have to do FaceTime, so on and so forth. So our surrogate was supposed to have her 20 week early on in March. So maybe I'm off on some dates, yeah. but I remember March, end of March, like first week of, yeah, end of March, she was supposed to have her 20 weeks. She got really sick. So right in the thick of things shutting down I mean, in the pandemonium and nobody knows what to think about the world, right? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Nightmare, right. like nightmare. Yeah. You're like, oh my God, how am I gonna bring a child into this? You know, how are we gonna do this? How is this gonna work? Right. Right. You know, they're scaring us. We can't go here. We can't do this. We can't be in delivery rooms. We don't know how long this is gonna last. So I just start ordering things because I'm like, I'm scared. I'm not having a shower, obviously, because we can't even see our family, much less get together for a baby shower. This is at the beginning of things. And I'm like, she's, you know, she's like 20 some odd weeks. So we go to have our first um, ultrasound in <clears throat> April, finally, the 20 week. It was like 23 days. It was 23 weeks and like four days. So it was just shy of like 24 weeks. Um, and I'm like, okay, I'm all excited. My husband and I are excited. We're going to do FaceTime. And during this period of time, Arsiak, you've been in contact regularly with your surrogate, right? Yeah. Doing FaceTime, checking. Everything seems to be going yeah. well. Baby's moving to her. According to her, baby's moving. You know, everything is happening. So I'm, I had to trust her, right? I can't like physically go there. I can't see what she's doing. She's just sick. I've, and they tested her for COVID. You know, she didn't have it, but she was sick for a few weeks, a couple of weeks. So long story short, we go in and now this is April 17th of 2020. I'll never forget that day. And we're sitting there. It's like 1130 in the afternoon, in the morning, early morning. My husband and I are sitting on the couch and we're waiting, you know, and I get a FaceTime call from my surrogate and the look on her face was like not normal. And I was like, what the hell is going mm. on? I didn't understand what was going on. Her doctor was standing right next to her. By the way, she had, she did not, her doctor did not have good set bedside manners. They were just awful. She tells me that there's no heartbeat. I'm like, I mean, and that's all oh. I heard. That's all I heard. Right. Like, and then the world goes black. Right? Yeah. The I'm shutters like, wait a minute. Down. It's six months. We're six months into this, like almost. Like, what do you mean there's no heartbeat? Surrogate's crying. I start crying. I remember I had on my clothes. I had to take my clothes off because I felt like something was just, I was being suffocated. Like I could oh. not. And my husband's like trying to call me. He's crying. We're crying. We're like, what are you talking about? This is impossible. You know? Um, and then. And what's the explanation? Was, they didn't, they couldn't explain it at the time until, um, mm. she delivered. And then, um, we had the autopsy and it was an umbilical cord. Mm. So that's that, that. So bringing it full circle, no wonder this yeah. is such a, an important and sensitive topic today, yeah. this morning, right? Yeah. Like this, yeah. this is not going to go away until you're holding that baby. Yep. Exactly. Oh, oh. And so how is. is this journey different now? I mean, now you're, you're almost there. You can see the finish line. You're about to just leap across it. What makes this aside from the fact that, you know, any moment you're going to hold your child, but what are the differences? Oh, wow. I mean, where do I begin conceivabilities? I mean, that's the first difference. They have been amazing since day one. Um, it was just, I'm really big on energy. I'm really big on mm -hmm. just feelings. And this feeling was way different. Even the first time that I spoke to um, conceivabilities, it was just completely different from that. It just started to put my mind at ease and then, um, just the whole process. And then our surrogate now, she is, she's amazing. Like she has been so communicative. Yeah, tell, tell our audience about her. She I know that they're just dying to like, know how great she is. <laughs> she is. I was just on the phone with her and I was like, when we go through this again, God willing, I'm just going to tell them to clone you and to give me that. 
because I know you're not doing this again. I just want to clone you. I don't want to go through the process again of asking questions and all of that. Just give me your clone and whoever that is. And she's like, stop it. I'm like, no, you know, and I'm not like, you know, my, our last surrogate, she was a wonderful human being. She was. Anyone that does this is just, they're, they're really good people. I'm not saying that she wasn't, right? But it was just, this one is just organized. She's on top of it. She's like constantly, especially through all of this whole process, she's, you know, she's like, I'm feeling like I have to feel her. She's not moving every hour. Like I'm like freaking out, but thank God this one, this baby is very active and she's, She's just made me feel so comfortable. She is. Can, can you give us some details about what really makes this partnership with her work so well? Like when you say she's detailed, like what is it about her that just puts your mind at ease? Doctor's appointments. She's on top of it. She te she'll text me random um, foods that she's eating. Like the baby's craving <laughs> this today, you know? And I'm like, oh, avocado toast. Okay. We know she's a healthy little one. Or, you know, she'll say, you know, she'll text me, um, a video of her moving. Um, and it's just, you know, or we need this RCAC. I'm not feeling good today. Uh, or through, at the beginning of the pregnancy, she wasn't feeling good. She didn't have a good start to her pregnancy. She was very sick. And she would say, Hey, um, could you, do you mind if I take this? I'm like, Nope, as long as the doctor okays it, you know, I'm fine with that. So she always asked me before she did things, you know, especially with the vaccines now, like with COVID and all of that, she would ask, you know, hey, do you want to do this? Or do you want to do that? It's up to you. It's your baby. Yes, it's my body, but it's your baby. So she has just been amazing. And my thing is when you're going through surrogacy, you have to be, you have to communicate. And the number one priority, yes, the baby, of course, but also the surrogate mother. You have to make sure the surrogate mother's healthy, she's happy, she's eating good, she's, you know, doing her thing, whatever it might be, because she's the one that's feeding your baby. So my thing is always when I talk to the doctors, I'm like, is Amanda healthy? Yes, she is. Is the baby healthy? Yes, she is. Um, and it's that's like the top priority. Amanda yeah, and the they baby. They go hand in hand, hand in yeah. hand. And I think too, when when working, you know, speaking from the agency perspective working on a match and knowing, look, this is a client who has had this experience. This is what they bring to bear in the moment. And so matching them with a surrogate who has this awareness, who will be able to be empathetic to the journey that preceded them yeah. so they could work to quell any anxieties, concerns, and be a better partner to you yes. in the moment. It's not, you know, you bring to this an awareness that a, a first time intended parent uh, wouldn't have. Right. Yeah. So we, we do need to think about those factors in creating these these matches, these partnerships that yes. will go the distance. So communicate. We can talk about communication, but it's it's a lot harder to uh, define what it is that we need with good communication and then see it in action and know that we have it. Yes. And the thing is, I would say the first time intended parents is don't be afraid to ask. Like if you want more ultrasounds, you tell them from the beginning, you know, if you want your surrogate to eat certain types of foods, you, you have that conversation with them beforehand, you know, make sure when you're interviewing that surrogate, that the same thing you would do, if you were carrying that child, what would you do? Make sure that that person, the surrogate, that you choose to work with and she chooses to work with you because it is a partnership like you said it's a two-way street make sure that that person understands your needs and wants as well as you understand her needs and wants and that's the most important thing um you know the thing is is to be able to say you know what also ask them what's your lifestyle like because that's going to be important you know if they have a you know, cause surrogates are all, they're all an array of people, you know, they're so all over, they're educated, they, uh, they're working, yes. a lot of them are That's working right. moms. Right. Um, a lot of them are, you know, taking care of their kids. So you have to understand, you know, are they stressed out? Are they, do they have a lot on their plate? Um, why are they doing this? Why are they being a surrogate outside of, 
you know, um, they just want to help somebody else? Is it because that they need, you know, a little bit more financial support? There's, there's an array of decisions to be made and don't be afraid to ask those hard questions when you are, you know, interviewing with a surrogate because this person is going to be the person that is either in your life for the next year and a half until you get to that point, that finish line, or forever. And for me, um, I see my surrogate being in my life forever. So when we think one. about, you know, choosing a surrogate, right, and all the factors that you just laid out for our listeners, which are terrific, you know, but the the first hurdle is is connecting and getting assimilated with a, an agency where they just resonate with you. There's this yes. trustworthiness, there's an authenticity, there's a history and a positive track record. So tell us, you know, for those who might be listening to this and are really at the crossroads of making that final leap into surrogacy and, and looking to choose an agency, or perhaps they've chosen an agency and they haven't yet chosen their surrogate, but what do you, what would your advice to them be and how important it is to choose that agency? What are the factors that you consider uh, the most important ones in that choice? You know, I, I have a, I, I could compare because I've had one agency that I would not recommend to anyone and one agency that I would recommend to everyone. Um, this agency conceivability is one of the things, the most important amongst so many. And I've talked to a lot of different agencies before I made, you know, this decision at the beginning, before I started my surrogacy is communication. How is their process? Process is so important. You don't understand when you're going through this, especially for a first time intended parent, how much paperwork you need. Who's gonna keep up with doctor's appointments? How are you gonna know, you know what you have to do next? You don't know all of this. With conceivabilities, they literally lay out everything for you and have someone that is working with you solely and reminding you, hey, don't forget you have, Amanda has an upcoming doctor's appointment today. You know, good luck with everything today. Um, please keep us posted on what's happening. Um, that's important, you know, because sometimes we forget, even though you're communicating with the surrogate, you know, you have the agency also doing that. When it comes to attorneys, you don't have to think about that. They have in-house attorney. And then when you have your, let's say your surrogate's out of state, depending on what state that your surrogate's in, they have attorney and referral partners out there that'll help you, you know, make, that'll help you get that paperwork. They are on top of it. So make sure the process, how is their process? You need, I mean, there are about 15 different steps that you're going to have to take mm -hmm. before this child is in your arms. Make sure that you have, you choose, a, you choose an agency that is going to make sure that process is going to be seamless for you. And number two, I will say this, don't go with the cheapest agency you will get what you pay for. I hate to say that, um, but you will get what you pay for. There are some agencies that are a little bit more, but at the end of the day, it's the process and you can't put a dollar amount on the baby that you're bringing into this world. You want to make sure all your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed. And True. one thing True. with this agency, I have not had to think about anything like the attorney like if i forgot to follow up with my attorney they're following up with my attorney for me and making sure that paperwork's done hey what happened to this paperwork we need to make sure this is done before you know the before the, the birth order we need to make sure this is done i mean it just takes so much pressure off of you you know what's so interesting i always find it fascinating that you know, obviously I'm in the inside. I understand the heavy lift and the enormity of the work involved in a successful surrogacy and recruiting mm -hmm. these incredible women. Yeah. It's easy to recruit the not so great women, but that's not what we do. And that's not what our clients want from us. Mm -hmm. They want the best. They want security. They want safety. They want uh, as, as much assurance as possible, knowing nothing is guaranteed in this world. But when we're talking about the long journey that the vast majority of clients have already been through, right? The disappointment, the heartache, the setbacks, 
you would think that people would want that assurance that they are getting what they pay for it, that they are really trying to uh, leverage their success and not cut corners with the health of their 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 baby, right? What they worked yeah. so long and so hard for. Yeah, it's it's amazing that people really are willing to cut some corners out there. But this is not, I think, where you want to cut some corners. Yeah, you definitely don't want to cut corners, not when it comes to this process. It is a process that is very time consuming. You have to have patience and you have to have the right people around you because at a time sometimes when you don't have sense for yourself, at least you have the people around you that'll have sense for you because there's just so much going on. You know, this, the surrogacy process, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's so beautiful. Like for another woman to be able to give another woman or family that gift that keeps on giving, which is such, it's something that is so indescribable i can't even think of the right words to to show my gratitude and appreciation for our surrogate you just have to make sure that you have the right people around you and with with conceivabilities i had the right people around me i did it they made this process i was just telling my husband this morning and it's funny because i was telling amanda this too they literally and amanda's had, your surrogate yes yeah, sorry, sorry i keep yeah <laughs> yeah my surrogate um she's just been amazing she is so amazing and i told him i was like oh my gosh this went by so fast and even with conceivabilities like they hit timelines if they tell you you're going to be matched between eight to twelve weeks you're going to be matched between eight to twelve weeks there are agencies out there that'll give you a timeline and it's 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 false you know, and then when you go back to them and they're like, oh, well, we haven't found anyone for you. It's like, wait a minute, you mean to tell me, and it's not like I'm asking for someone to fly to the moon, you know, that's an, that's, it's, it's somebody, I had simple request. They literally, I mean, their timelines are unbelievable. I, I just, and if we do this, like I said, if we do this process again, God willing, we would be, um, you know, using them again. And I've referred people to them, you know, and I tell them and I'm like, look, do your research, talk to people. I'm not just, but this is where my experience was because I had an experience with this and I've talked to other people and it's nothing like this. Their process is amazing. So now, you know, that you, you've had this terrific experience. You've had uh, a great partnership with Amanda you've, you know, you've, you've said things on this podcast about just how, how much she means to you and how important she is. And how, you know, you feel that that importance will transcend the rest of your lives, right? Yeah. This, she will be a part of your life for a long time, if not forever. Yes. But how, you know, this partnership, when you think about the beauty of it and the, the, the intimacy, I mean, it's so unique. Most people will never have a partnership like this in their life. Mm -mm. How has this partnership changed your life? Um, I was having this conversation the uh, couple of weeks, uh, last week with um, one of my childhood friends, she's a photographer. And um, I was doing just a photo shoot. And she said to me, she's like, this is your maternity shoot. And I was like, what? She goes, yeah, this is your maternity shoot. Just because you are not actually caring does not make you no less of a mother. And that should not take away from you. And at that moment, it really clicked where it was like so empowering to me. This partnership has, has changed me to the point where when I go back out there and I start and I continue doing the work that I've been doing before, my messaging will be that as we as women we know we've had this movement right if this woman could come to me and help me give me something that i could not do for myself there's no reason why other women out there we can't do more for each other and I do a lot, I do, but there's so much more that I want to do for other women out there. I don't know what exactly or how that's going to look like, but it's just empowered me so much to speak about my journey, 
not to be ashamed of anything anymore because there's some things that are out of our control and we can't help and that it has just been such an amazing experience i cannot put it into words but i know in my future i will put it into action and especially now that we're having a little girl I want to be the best role model that I could possibly be to my daughter. And I want to show my daughter that no matter what in life that we could push through anything. And there are some amazing, amazing people out there and that you were brought into this world by a really amazing human being. Right. Because our paths, you know, they're very circuitous in life, right? Yeah. They're, they're windy. Our, our paths don't take um, a very linear um, you know, a, a, a A to B line, I guess is what I'm saying. The, yeah. Life's pathways are very circular and winding. And it's really about eventually getting to the destination. I know that's not quite the cliche words out there. People talk yeah. about the journey and the journey is important, but the journey can be different for everyone. But as long as we achieve the objective, and I am big on objectives, I do believe yeah. destinations are important. I think that it's even more important when we're talking about surrogacy and bringing home that child that you have fought so hard and the family that you fought so hard to have. I think it's super important to think about that destination. And no matter how you get it, I think just being persevering and I love that term failing forward, right? Just yeah. getting up and trying and trying again. And so yeah. when you think about the messaging that you're going to take out into the world after this is done, you know, what, what about the women who are thinking about being surrogates, right? Because, uh, you know, gosh, there's simply not enough great surrogates out there. I wish there were more women who answered the calling. What might you say to those women who are considering becoming a surrogate about the gift that they could bestow to other women like you? If you're thinking about it, just do it. Like the journey that you will have and the women that you will meet or the families, you know, because there are families out there that are wanting to start families, whatever your family looks like, just do it. Because the, the reward is so much bigger than anything that could ever be achieved in one's life. And it's, it's, you're bringing another human being into this world. Like, I don't know how to even describe that. You're, you're giving life and it's the gift that keeps on giving. I don't know you know, I can only speak upon my experience as being an intended parent, an intended first time parent. It is such a beautiful journey. And I will say this, my surrogate has made me feel like I'm going through this with her. It's just been, I don't know, it's just an indescribable energy that both of us have. We do have a special connection. My surrogate and I do. We have this special connection. We've said this time and time. We've laughed about it together. Um, <laughs> and if you could do that, women that are out there that are thinking about being surrogates, just do it. I promise you, it won't. It's one of the best things you will do. You will not be disappointed. If you enjoy being pregnant and you have had healthy pregnancies in the past and pregnancy hasn't been hard on you, you should definitely consider being a surrogate. How about any misconceptions that you or Amanda might have come across in your journey together? And how might you, you know, dispel some of those myths or misconceptions that might be out there? Oh, what, if, what did I hear? Somebody said, oh, what if she takes the baby and runs with it? I was like, are you, are you crazy? <laughs> Are you crazy? I, I know that is the, the number one myth, right? And it, it that is like the number the one. We've never seen it ever. ever. I've never seen it. I'm like, what are we like in a third world home. country? Like you just literally <laughs> shipped your embryo to some woman you've never met, you know? Um, it's just, it's crazy. Um, or what if you don't know, you know what? No, you do. That is why, again, I mean, I don't have any... With Amanda, like I said, the misconception with her, I, I didn't have any because the agency made things so clear. The agency, late before anything had happened, the agency made everything so clear before we even had the first initial phone call with Amanda. 
And when we got on that phone, all of our questions were answered. My husband and I got off because we were on FaceTime actually, um, because we were still in COVID. So it wasn't like the meet and greet like you would normally have, but um, thank God for technology. Our aunt, we both looked at each other and we're like, she's the one. Oh, that's so great. And I mean, given our success rate, right? 97% yeah. of intended parents say yes after that first meeting. Yes. There's the energy and the discipline and the diligence that gets put into matchmaking. Um, yeah. it, it, it goes the distance. The statistics speak for themselves and you are a shining example of that. And I, it's just, it's such a wonderful story to showcase for our listeners. Um, why you. do you think it's so so important, though, to get this message out and to help women who may want to become a surrogate understand the process? Like, is there anything that you could point to, you know, just taking it from your own personal vantage point of working with Amanda, where Amanda could have maybe has said to you, you know, they could have done a little bit of a better job of preparing me for A, B, or C. Did you experience any of that with Amanda no. where she wasn't prepared? No, because she's been, this is her second go around with conceivabilities. So she's been a surrogate before. And even on the first surrogacy journey, from what I understood with her, she was with the same people for three years, I think. It was something long like that, mm -hmm. that she was with them for a while because, you know, they didn't, they had like failed attempts and they were, you know, um, she was going through IVF and trying to do all of that. I don't know exactly the exact like nitty gritty details of what happened, but she had been with them for three years. So she had learned along the way too, but with conceivabilities, she said that they laid everything out. They made it very clear, you know, of how to become a sur surrogate, what she needed to know. And not only that, it makes it easier when you're a parent yourself, right? It makes it very, it makes it much easier. And most of the surrogates, from my understanding, I know their parents already, they have kids, at least mm -hmm. one child, mm -hmm. if anything. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think, I think, and I'm not sure, and I'm maybe speaking and I'm wrong and please correct me if I am. I think with uh, conceivabilities, you have to be a parent. Like you have to you at do. least have one of your children. You have to be rearing own. a child at home. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Correct. So that makes a huge difference. It does. And I think, too, it, it helps to further dispel the myth that, you know, surrogates want to run off with this baby. Like when you already have young children at home that you're rearing, right? The, the you're like, you know what? Past. The eviction is nine months. OK, I yeah, signed a lease yeah. and nine months later, this baby right, like is I'm getting good. evicted I don't want and she needs a home to go to. <laughs> Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, you have such an amazing story, right? You have gone through the depths, not only with your own fertility struggles, right? But also with, with surrogacy and that first journey elsewhere that just ended in sadness. And, and it, you know, it was uh, a very dark moment in your journey. And then to have this, you know, fantastic partnership with Amanda and you're almost right at the finish line. What are some of the things that you really wish you had known um, that have turned out to be your biggest challenges or triumphs that you'd like to, to help others understand so they don't perhaps either make the same mistakes or that they're well prepared for the obstacles? Um, make sure you set your expectations um, and be realistic. Just know that maybe that if you go through this journey with a surrogate and you, your first transfer might not work. And maybe your second transfer might not work. You never know. Mm -hmm. I've heard all sorts of stories, but don't give up hope. That's the one thing that kept me going was hope. Um, and that's the most, one of the most important things is you just have to keep putting your best foot forward and knowing you're doing everything that you possibly can do. And at the end of the day, the results are out of your control. There's nothing we can control right. beyond that. Um, but doing, laying the groundwork, right? Doing the yeah. good work and then letting science do the rest, letting yes. good relationships do the rest. Uh, having a good good partner, whether it's with your surrogate or the agency, help to facilitate 
Yeah. But a lot of it is up to the cosmos, isn't it? Isn't that yeah, it, it really is. It really is. And know that there are other options. You know, there are a lot, there, are, there are a lot of other options when you're, you, when you're working with surrogacy and how you're going to achieve that, whether it's through your own DNA, whether it's donor, um, it, there's so many different options out there and don't let just, if you're stuck on one thing and it doesn't work out, just know that there are other possibilities. And that's, you know, that's, that's what I had to keep telling myself that no matter what, I'm going to be a mom and we're going to figure it out and we're going to make it happen. We've got to make it happen. Arsiak, you said something early in our talk today where, you know, you building a platform and running a, a company and a business that really helps empower women. Um, you know, if we can have other women help women to grow and thrive in a business setting, right, through networking mm -hmm. and connections and support and B2B contacts and all the, the good work that women bring to the table uh, with each other, why can't we have women help other women build families? It just seems like such a natural part of it all, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. I agree. I think that that's so important. And, and for me, you know, just being in the business world and then starting, you know, with my own family, I was, I said to myself, if a woman could start and could help another woman start a family, why can't another woman help another woman climb up that ladder? I'm like, we Indeed. should be able to help each other all the way around. And there shouldn't be any of that cattiness or that, that, Oh, that's supposed to be mine or that's supposed to be mine. Or if another woman got pregnant and it's a friend of yours and you didn't be happy for her because energy is so important. If you're not happy for one, what does that say about you? And how's that going to come back to you? Just know our journeys all look different. They all look different. We're not all at the end of the day. Yes, we're trying to achieve, you know, in this situation a family we're trying to start a family but all of that looks different for all of us and we're here it to support sure each does. other and not judge and tear each other down um, absolutely well i think i have such a a great perspective and it's just been an honor to work in this field because i do see uh, fortunately the very best of women helping each other yeah that has been just such a privilege in in my own career in my own life and I'm quite fortunate because I do know it's not like that everywhere. In fact, it could be far from it, but at least when yeah. it comes to family building and the world of surrogacy, uh, this is the epicenter and the true meaning of women helping women without a yes. doubt. Yes. And I will say one thing, one, one more thing. Um, this whole team, I haven't met the entire team, but everyone that I've met through this agency, they're all women. And that has been so empowering and inspiring from the attorneys to the, to the coordinators, to the hospital coordinators. It's just been from point A to point from A to Z. And I know we're getting to Z. They're all women, even, <laughs> even Amanda's doctors. She's got two, they're women. Um, it's just been such an amazing journey. And this, like I said, it's just been so inspiring and empowering to see this whole thing. It's almost like a different world, right? Sure. Like you're it almost is. like in a avatar world that seems like it doesn't exist, but it really does. It really does, it does. exist. It does. And I'm walking proof of how I'm bringing a child into this world. And there's so many other women like this. I know there's so many other women like this. Now we're hearing it more and more, you know, through celebrities and hopefully through everyday women, we're going to hear more and more of these stories. Well, I think you, you are on point to take this very powerful message that resonates personally uh, and you're, you're armed and ready to take it out into the world. And I'm so excited to hear it. Um, if you had to think back on, you know, your experience and in particular, maybe our time today together, what is your biggest takeaway? What's the aha moment as I like to call it? The aha moment. Um, it's just, just being on this podcast has been for me such a just an aha moment because of the fact of what you're doing 
you know, the work that you're doing, the message that you're putting out into this world about how all, you know, other women are helping other women start families. And it's just been such a, an honor to even be able to tell my story and to give me that platform. Because as I said earlier, I felt ashamed, but there's nothing to be ashamed about. It's, you know, our, the best way to get to know someone is through their vulnerability. And when you're vulnerable does not mean you're weak. You're at your strongest point. Right now, I feel like I'm at my strongest point. Over the last two weeks and when this whole thing started, it made me feel so empowered and strong. And I know that that's been my aha moment. I'm going to be a mom. And this is amazing. And being able to tell this story to other women that might be struggling through this or thinking about it. It's just like, wow, I cannot believe this. I cannot believe what this little girl that's coming into this world has created for me. So beautiful, Arsiak. I can't thank you enough for just the vulnerability, the candor, the power that you exude. I have no doubt that this is going to be one of our most popular podcasts because what, everything that you've touched upon resonates deeply with not only with intended parents, but with surrogates too. So thank you for joining me today. And I really look forward to the news that you have welcomed your baby girl and you have her in your arms. Thank you so much. It's been such an honor to be here today. So thank you for giving me this opportunity. Wow, how cool, incredible, amazing was that? Uh, what a lady. Uh, she is really a, a, a demonstration of what it's like to persevere and to just get back in the saddle when you get tossed off that horse. Um, I think when I think about many of the aha moments that I've had an opportunity to share during this show, I think this episode in my conversation with RCAC in particular is one that really demonstrates the power of perseverance. And when I mentioned that, you know, there's, there's some real wisdom in failing forward, uh, she demonstrates the virtue of what it's like to continue to find your own way in the world, to find a journey towards that destination, to fail forward, and to ultimately succeed. So listeners, I hope you look back on 2021 as a year of gifts and opportunities in spite of our collective challenges and look to 2022 ahead as a year to realize further gifts and to make your dreams a reality. Happy New Year, everybody. And until next time, take care. At Conceivabilities, we believe that everyone who wants to become a parent can. Our agency has helped build thousands of families for nearly 25 years. Whether you are an intended parent ready to fulfill your family destiny, a surrogate answering your calling, or an egg donor wanting to expand what's possible in your life, we are your people. See how matching matters. Learn more by joining our Surrogacy Learning Center community at surrogacylearningcenter.conceivabilities.com.